Hi, friends. Today, I'm so excited to share with you behind the scenes and everything I learned during my first 50K launch and really everything I've learned in all of the launches I've done in the past five years in my business. This is the third time I've launched Sell With Heart, the seventh I've run Visible Impact seven times now. And overall, I've done 25 plus launches in my business of everything from, you know, $20 products all the way up to $6,000 group products. And so I feel like I've learned a thing or two about launches launches. And I am so excited to share my nuggets with you because especially if you are a heart-centered entrepreneur and if you love group programs like me, I think they are the best way to scale your business because I feel like when a client is in a group, I really feel like they are getting even more value. And so it's such a good way to leverage your time and make more money while adding value and giving your client a great experience, giving them a great chance to get great results, everything. So if you are going to be launching a group program this year, tune in. And even if you're in the place where you're not quite ready to do a big launch, I still really feel like this is going to help you in the way that I talk about some of the lessons that I learned conceptually. But (laughs) you know, I have to say, if you are at the start of your business, you know, I'm a huge believer in filling up your one-on-one first and solidifying that first income stream before you move to secondary income streams or more passive type income. Um, So know that I'm cheering you on if you are like ruthlessly working on landing those first three one-on-one clients or whatever it is to get fully booked for you. But when it comes time, come back and listen to this episode um, for some of the things that I've learned for filling groups. And these are a little bit more advanced tips. So you guys already know the basics. So I'm not going to go deep into these, but of course, what I did right for this launch is having a clear message, getting consistently visible, selling with heart, having an incredible team that supports me. Those things are like non-negotiable, right? So we're just going to assume you're like, oh yes, Anna did those basics. But on top of that, here's some about four or five nuggets that I really want to share with you today that I feel like are going to hopefully help things click for you. Welcome to the Heart Centered Entrepreneur Podcast. I want you to be rich. Yes, I want abundant financial success for your business but I don't just care about your business making money. I care about you too. I want you to be rich in happiness, in the impact you make, in your relationships, and in how you give back. I'm Anna. I built my six-figure business as a side hustle while I was pregnant with my daughter in 2016. Now I've helped dozens of women do the same. I'm here to help you build a profitable, heart-centered, fully booked business with the latest tips on sales and visibility, with proven mindset hacks, and sneak peeks behind the scenes with what's working right now in the online space and in my business. Ready to make more money with heart? Let's go. Okay, so the first thing that I feel like I do really good now that was hard for me at the start of my business is that I really separate my business from my clients' businesses or from the people I help. And I really see so many of my clients struggling with this. And so I really want to talk about this today. Um, What does this mean? Okay, let's say you're a website designer, right? (laughs) A lot of times, if your work is that you design websites, you put a lot of pressure on yourself to have a perfect website, right? Let's say you are a child infant sleep coach, right? You help mamas get their babies more sleep. And so often I see those business owners putting a lot of pressure on themselves to have their child sleep perfectly all the time. (laughs) And if there is an issue, you know, it feels like this integrity thing. And first I want to say, I'm a huge believer in taking your own medicine. So what I'm not saying is walk your, don't walk your talk. I am a huge believer in if you preach something, practice it, right? I am a huge advocate of doing daily mindset work. And so I really do my daily journaling check. And, you know, I've shared that with you guys before the five or six questions I ask myself daily. I do that, right? I really preach the power of coaching. And so in the last five years, I've almost always had some sort of coach or high level mastermind, right? I'm not saying, you know, same thing with sales. Like I, 
you know, preach keeping sales simple. And so I also do that in my business. So yes, integrity. Yes, practicing what you preach. Okay. However, (laughs) I think a lot of people take it a step too far when they start creating busy work for themselves because let's say they, you know, are a social media coach. And so, you know, they feel the pressure to master every single social media channel, right? Or like back with the website example, I have advised several of my clients that are designers in different seasons of their life, of their business, I know your website doesn't feel perfect right now, but I don't think it's the best move to go back and perfect it, right? <laughs> and so how this came up for me in this round of the launch, right? Obviously I'm selling a program on sales <laughs> called Sell With Heart, right? So in the middle of the launch, I definitely had a week where I was like, oh shoot, right? I only have seven of the 10 spaces filled, you know, do, what do I know about selling? You know, here I am and my program isn't even sold out, right? But I think I know myself well enough to realize like, okay, Anna, you're in the middle of a launch, right? Um, and so the, I think that's a big reason why I'm able to be successful in the middle of launches or stressful seasons is because I already feel an integrity. And so I don't put pressure on myself to do other things. Um, another example of this is like, if you help other people with their, um, podcast, right? I have, you know, I know several clients that they help their clients with podcasting, but they don't necessarily have a podcast themselves, right? And so it's just realizing, making sure that what you're doing is like, watch the energy that you're doing it from. Are you doing it? And are you just creating busy work for yourself because you want to quote, be in integrity? (laughs) Or are you truly doing it because you do want to be in integrity, right? Taking your own medicine. So I think it's just really watching that and being mindful of it and separating your results, right, from what you help your clients with. And I know if there's some overlap in that, um, if you are a health coach and you help your clients um, lose weight, maybe you're in a season, you've gained a little bit of weight, right? Right. It's just really being mindful that we are remembering, hey, we know what we're doing. (laughs) We have our expertise for a reason. Our clients are working with us for a reason and not over mashing and melding our business with our client's business. Does that make sense? I hope that that's helpful for you. Okay. Another lesson is I set big goals. I really set big goals for myself, but I also don't beat myself up for them when I don't hit the goals. Right. And a lot of clients that I work with are type A, are really driven. And so have a really hard time with setting big goals that they know that they may not meet because they feel like a failure whenever they don't meet a goal. Right. This is because like in grad school, in the professional world, like it's really important that you meet every single goal, but it sounds crazy, but I feel like in entrepreneurship, you almost have to set unrealistic goals or else you're not going to grow and stretch yourself, right? If you set these bare minimum basic goals that are safe, you're never really going to be rapidly growing your business. And so I feel like in my launches and in my business in general, something that I do now that really serves me is I just almost assume that I'm not going to meet all my goals and that's okay, right? Probably half the goals that I set in my business, I don't meet. I talk more about this in the live stream that I did, Rejection is Redirection. Um, And this has helped me so much, right, is going for big goals. And honestly, what I try to do is I try to celebrate myself either way, right? So often I will meet the goal and I celebrate that, right? I try to really lock in that that win before I move on to the next thing. But honestly, even when I don't meet my goal, there have been launches where I haven't met my launch goal quote, but I still celebrate, right? Oh, I'm so thankful for these eight women or these 10 women or however many were in the launch that were in there. And I'm so proud of myself for showing up in the sales. And I know I'm going to show up on the back end. And I know this is just the, the, the women that were meant to be in the program, right? And so I want you to play with that. I want you to play with what you make goals mean when you don't meet them. Do you make it mean that you are a failure, right? I don't make it mean that at all. I make it mean that it wasn't meant to be. (laughs) And maybe that sounds like overly simplistic, but, and I, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, like, obviously like I have a moment of disappointment, but it really doesn't last more than like a few hours or a day. Right. And then I'm like, you know what, that was what's meant to be. And now I'm going to move on to the next thing. Right. So it's that having that radical faith 
faith and that hope. And like, let's say you're trying to get 20 people in your program. If you shoot for 40, right, you're going to show up with more energy and more likelihood to hit the 20 than if you try to hit 20. Does that make sense? And so I like to like overshoot, work towards it, um, and then don't make it mean anything if I don't hit it. Does that sound crazy? Um, I also try to take the deadline off and I really encourage my clients to do this too, right? So let's say in your business right now, you're working on, you know, filling three one-on-one clients, right? Instead of saying like, I need to sign three one-on-one clients in the next two weeks or else I'm quitting my business, right? (laughs) I have really found it be so effective for my clients when I tell them, okay, your next goal is to sign three one-on-one clients. I'm gonna be here with you till you make it happen. Whether you sign all all three of those clients tomorrow or whether it takes you six months. I don't care. Like I'm here for that, right? We are not locked in on the deadline. We are locked in on that objective and we're just going to trust that it happens. I think a lot of people are afraid to take the deadline off their goal, but actually I always find that when you take the deadline off your goal, it happens faster than it does longer, right? Because of that detachment and because of that trust and because we're really saying, right? I know that this is going to happen. I'm locked in on it and I don't care how dang long I have to show up to see it happen, right? Same thing I feel like with business success in general, one of the beliefs that really, you've heard me talk about this before, but served me so well at the start of my business is believing like, I know my business is going to be a success. I know my success is inevitable. And so I'm just going to keep going at it till it works. (laughs) And so I feel like that can really serve you if you're in a place of wondering or doubting, right? Really going in whatever that goal is whether it's a client goal or a money goal, being locked in on it, but also knowing that you can take the deadline off. This, and you know, in some ways you're like, well, Anna, how do you do that with a launch when you actually do have a deadline, (laughs) right? Anna, you do actually have like a start date. So with this, what I try to do with launches is like give myself margin, right? I try to like give myself extra buffer time. Now I almost never have like the cart close B on, um, the start date of the program, I try to like give myself some buffer time, give myself a longer cart close. Um, but either way, just trusting, right. Just like having that trust and just knowing. And I, um, I feel like that so served me. So that's what I want you to play with that. That's lesson number two. I set big goals and I don't might beat myself up when I don't hit them. I would love to, for you to journal on which do you need to work on? Do you need to work on setting bigger goals or do you feel like you do set big goals, but you really beat yourself up, make yourself feel wrong and then like get really backtracked when you don't hit them? Because that second part is so important, right? When you don't beat, when you don't beat yourself up for it, you really save a lot of time, <laughs> right? And you're able to like bounce back. You're able to take the lessons. Okay, why didn't I meet my goal? What can I learn? How can I shift, right? And the cool thing about like when you go for it 100%, right? When you really go for it, you have data. I always tell my clients, I love when you're just going for it, even if some things are working, some aren't, because it gives us so much data to say, hey, you showed up on Instagram stories for 30 30 days and it worked or it didn't work, right? But if you're not taking the action, we just don't have that data to be able to um, assess and know if you need to shift. Okay, next lesson that I feel like I did really well is I stayed focused, focused, focused on simple strategy and I avoided distractions and I did mindset work like it's my full-time job. Um, And you guys know I preach this and I feel like I really have gotten this down where during a launch, right? If you listen to Karen's episode, you've got to catch that a few episodes back. I'll, I'll link it where she talked about her launch. She launched and sold out her first group program, Invisible Impact. Um, and she talks about like the launch roller coaster, right? And normally a pattern in a launch is you first release something, it sells a few seats, and then there's kind of like a gap in the middle where no one buys, and then more people buy usually at the end, right? That's like pretty normal in a launch. People buy around a deadline, right? People buy when it's top of mind. People buy when you're sending emails. Um, and so on a head level, you and I both know that that's normal, right? But I promise you, you guys know this if you've launched before, even to the this day for me in the middle, you definitely have a slump of like, dang it, 
this isn't working. People are buying. What's wrong with me, right? And um, that's that time in your launch where it's really easy to get distracted. And this is where like for my clients, I really sit them down and I really help them avoid FOMO, right? I really help them watch distraction. And if they are tempted to try something new during the middle of a launch or something like that, I make sure it's filling their gap, right? What do I mean by their gap? You guys know I talk about the client map and knowing the path in your business that people go from free to paid. If you don't have that PDF, download it at, um, I'll drop the link below, but it's at annafranzen.com slash map. Um, and knowing where the gap is, right? So for me in this current launch, I knew that I didn't have any gaps, right? I knew that I had my external visibility down. I had my internal visibility. I had my sales strategy down. And so my work during the launch was just to show up and be present, right? Which is kind of the hardest thing (laughs) just to be present and be like, okay, I've just got to vulnerably show up and share my heart and trust that the right humans are going to say yes. Right. And I've got to show up, you know, almost daily during this launch. However, for some of my clients, they may have a gap, right? And so when you look at your map, you know, if you are in the middle of a launch feeling like you need to do something, make sure you're doing something that is aligned with the gap in your map. Again, okay, so what this means is, you know, one of the gaps you might have is external visibility, right? Internal visibility is the content you create for your current audience, right? External visibility is getting new eyeballs into your audience so that they can see your content, right? It is great if you're doing a Facebook live in your Facebook group, but if you don't have new people coming into your Facebook group, then that's a problem, right? And so, you know, there are many people to get people, there's many ways to get people into your Facebook group, right? And so that may be a problem you have. Hey, I need new humans. Do I need to pitch myself to some podcasts, right? Do I need to post in other people's Facebook groups, right? Do I need to ask people to share about the challenge I'm doing next week? Like, is are my actions actually solving the problem in my business, right? If you have an external visibility problem, let's say that's not a problem for you at all, right? Maybe you're like, Anna, I have a ton of humans, but no one's buying, right? You need to double down on your conversion strategy. What are you doing to get your current audience to buy from you, right? Are you hosting a challenge? Are you promoting discovery calls? Um, And so in this season of a launch, when you're feeling easily distractible, I would really encourage you to make sure you're working with your coach and know exactly, okay, where's my gap? And if I am doing anything extra during this launch, is it aligned with where the problem is? Because I promise you more often than not, my clients usually come to me and what they're getting an itch to do is actually duplicating what they're already doing, right? Like, let's say your conversion strategy is a challenge. You may be itching to like, oh, maybe I need to do a webinar too, right? You'll have this itch to duplicate instead of fill your gap, right? And I know that if you haven't done a client map yet, this may not make a lot of sense, right? So download the freebie. I also do one-on-one intensives. Um, And so if you are interested in that, you can chat with me about that to know what your client map is, know how people go from free to paid with you. But most of all, the nugget I want you to take from this is in the middle of a launch, if your client map is set, if you don't have any gaps, your job is to just make sure you're not distracted (laughs) by shiny objects and you're doing your mindset work. And if you do have a gap, right, if you do have extra time in the middle of a launch, make sure your actions are going towards what the problem is. Make sure you're solving the right problem and not creating extra busy work for yourself, right? Not burning yourself out um, in the middle of a lunch. Okay, next thing that I feel like I have really finally mastered is I have a rinse and repeat flow for the marketing and selling of my programs and also a rinse and repeat flow for the actual program, for the actual framework, for the course material, for the videos that are going out. Um, and I'm so thankful for that. And I just want to say, if your business isn't to that place yet, it takes time, right? And it's normal if at the start of your business, as you're launching your first group program, that your curriculum isn't perfect. In fact, you guys know I'd advise on your first group program launch, don't have a huge, crazy sales page, have a PDF, right? Do something really simple for the sales on the back end of it. When you have your first program, you know, send out YouTube videos via email for your 10 
send group participants, right? Um, send the worksheets via an email. Don't feel like you have to go into a course platform or over make it over complex because here's the beauty of not making it overly complex at the start is I don't know about you, but every time I rerun one of my programs, I iterate it a little bit. I really do. Or I add something, right? Visible Impact is now this like really robust program that has videos and worksheets and a way for me to review the participants' content every week, right? And a postcard in the mail every week. Like, but that happened over time. Every time I repeated the launch, I added a new layer and I added layers that I actually saw were getting my participants results. If you make your group or course overly complex at the beginning, I promise you, you're putting things in there that aren't really adding to your client's results. The whole point of the program is not that it looks sparkly. It's that your clients are getting massive results from that program. And the best way you can do it is start out simple and then layer on things, right? So it wasn't until a few iterations in that I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like people will actually write their weekly content is if I give them a bonus every week, a content review for having the content actually written right? Like the little ideas that I had to make the program more complex came from nuggets that I knew would get my clients better results, right? And so give yourself permission to be simple, right? But if you've been launching program your program for a while, if you're on your third or fourth iteration of launching your course or program, it is time to get it more automated, right? And I'm so thankful that my team has helped me with this, right? And so automating two parts, um, and I can't believe I'm using the word automating, <laughs> If you guys know me, you're like, what? Did Anne just say the word automated? Next thing you know, she's going to say passive income, right? <laughs> but I do believe when your business is at a certain place, it totally makes sense to start, quote, automating things, right? And so thinking about that for me, I think about it in two ways. How do I automate and systematize how I market the program, right? So I can rinse and repeat how I'm selling my programs in the launch. And then how do I automate so I can rinse and repeat the the actual course, the actual framework that I'm taking someone through, right? And at the start of your business, like keep it simple. Like even if you have one-on-one -on -one clients, you can already start thinking through, okay, what's that loose framework? What are those loose steps that I take someone through, right? I'm, Or maybe you're like, I kind of noticed I'm repeating the same thing to my one-on-one -on -one clients. Maybe you can make a video or a worksheet, right? And do you see how that sort of automation mirrors the actual work you're doing to get your clients results, right? Maybe you make a habit tracker because you're, you're asking all your clients to track their habits, right? Um, so just be aware of that and make sure you're automating from that place of simplicity. But when you are ready to automate, go for it. And so I feel like that's been such a gift and help, has helped me do bigger and bigger launches, number one, because I have a team that I can trust. And that's the biggest blessing, too, to um, having group programs or doing launches once you have money in your business, because then you can hire a team to help you. And even though my launches are fairly simple, they are still complex in the sense that there's a lot of moving parts. And I know I could not do it without my team. So if you're listening, thank you. Thank you, my loves. You know, I could not do this without you. Um, and so that has been a huge part of helping me get a system down that I can rinse and repeat. And so on the marketing end of it, what it usually looks like, if you're like, okay, Anna, let's get practical on the marketing. end for most of my launches, what it looks like is promoting the wait list or doing some connections, doing some pre-selling, taking deposits in advance for about two weeks, then promoting my conversion event for about two weeks. For me, I love a challenge. I love challenges, but maybe for you, it's a webinar, right? So promoting the conversion event for two weeks, doing the conversion event, having an open cart, having an early bird deadline with a bonus. You know, I know a lot of people don't like doing incentives because they feel spammy, but remember, like, that's just how we're made as humans, right? Like, we're all busy, and so it's okay to have an extra reason for someone to buy, Um I'm a huge believer in early bird bonuses, cart close. And then I love, especially if you um, haven't run your program several times, have a gap for yourself between when the cart closes and when the program starts, right? If you don't hit your enrollment goal, it allows a few more people to come in. But what it also does is it allows you to shift your brain towards serving your clients. I don't know about you, but for my programs, I really hit the ground running with my ladies. <laughs> and so, so 
it launches can be tiring, right? And so give yourself a little bit of a mental pause, right? Between when you close your cart and when the program starts, right? The exception to this is if you have like a program that's like super established and it's almost on like literally rinse and repeat. Now with Visible Impact, I kind of do have a shorter deadline between cart close and program open, but that's because I could run that program in my sleep. (laughs) I totally could, right? Helping women get visible in that way. Because like I said, I'm on the eighth time, you know, in two months when I run it again, I'll be on the eighth time of running it. Um, But if you haven't run it that many times, your group program, give yourself some gap between cart close and the cart opening. Okay. Finally, I connect when I'm in the launch, I show up a hundred percent because I know every single action I take, every visibility action, every sales action will lead to conversion, but I don't demand that it converts immediately. Okay. What do I mean by this? You guys have heard me talk about this in a recent podcast episode, but I think it's so important to remember that every time you take a sales action in your business, whenever you hop on a sales call, right? Whenever you take a visibility action, whenever you do a face, a uh, Facebook live, know that it definitely moves your business forward, even if you don't see it immediately, right? Maybe someone is on that sales call, they don't convert right now, but they convert next month, right? Maybe they don't convert at all, but they tell your friend and they buy, right? (laughs) Or a friend. Um, And I am so rooted in this that it makes showing up during a launch so easy (laughs) because I'm just rooted in belief that like the right people are 100% gonna buy, Um, And it's almost like I get the satisfaction in taking the action more so than the results. What do I mean by that? I, if I show up on Facebook live and I give my hundred percent, even if there's no one there live with me, it really doesn't bug my mindset too much, right? Because I trust that, oh, someone's going to catch it on the replay and be impacted, right? If I do a sales call and someone doesn't convert immediately, it really doesn't bug me. And that's probably why my sales calls partially convert at such a high rate because I'm not really attached, right? I really feel satisfaction in showing up for myself, showing up for my business and knowing that it's going to pay off in the right time. And I know if you're at the start of your business, this is especially hard to believe. It's so hard to have that faith before the evidence, right? But if you can get to that place where you start celebrating and you start counting the win is you showing up more so than someone saying yes or giving you kudos, I'm telling you, it's going to be such a game changer. And I saw that in this launch big time, right? Um, And also I want to talk about something that's called the launch echo, right? A lot of times you'll show up during a launch, you'll be extra visible. And yes, part of the impact is that you're making more sales during that particular period of time for that particular product. But what you will almost always see happen is that you will get other traction. Usually when I'm extra visible, I get extra, I landed two um, features, like two extra guest features, right? I, even though I was selling my mastermind, I ended up booking three one-on-one clients during this launch. And I didn't even have, I was fully booked. I didn't even have one-on-one spaces. So I signed those three clients in advance for, I took, took the money and then I signed them for an advance. Right. But they saw me being visible during that launch. And that's what attracted me to them. Right. I also sold several of my quote, passive income products. Right. And so I think it's just remembering showing up during a launch hundred percent, you actually want to sell that program and get results for whatever you're selling, but also realize that, you know, you're going to have so much goodness come from showing up and getting visible. So try to stay rooted in that. Try to stay rooted in your action more so than the exact result, even though obviously you do want the result of the program selling out. Right. Another way that I make sure that this happens in my business, that I do get such traction from my extra visibility, from my extra presence, is that my client map, right, is so locked in and my products align and they don't compete with each other, right? You know, I'm a fierce advocate for if you do have a product suite, right, if you are a more advanced entrepreneur, really making sure your products, what you sell for money, is aligned and they build off of each other and they don't compete with each other. This is so, so important. (laughs) This is so, so important. So if you, you know, are doing the dishes, turn off the water for a second. Okay. When you think about what you sell in your business, make sure that they build off each other, that they're complementary, right? Just like to the free part of your business, right? It's so important that you have that freebie, that you have an audience, that you have your external visibility, all that client map stuff, right? But it's also important that you also create clarity even in your paid work, right? 
right? Even in your paid offers. And my product suite is so locked in that it really does self-sell, right? When someone buys a small offer, they're really likely to buy the next offer. And this doesn't mean, again, the detachment, it doesn't mean that someone has to take my client map perfectly, right? Some people definitely, you know, go from never meeting me before to like buying my highest ticket offer, right? But having that path there is so important. And so often people do travel alongside it, right? So for me, just a practical example of what this may look like. And again, if you download that client map freebie, I also have a really practical example of a client map for a health coach. And so that can help. But for me, what my client map may look like, right, is someone hears me externally on someone else's podcast, like a guest feature. Then they head over to my podcast. They binge listen. They realize, oh, Anna has a Facebook group where she does live trainings. They she, they head over to my Facebook group. Maybe they do one of my challenges. I love doing challenges, right? Maybe they buy a social media template. Maybe they register for visible impact. After they do visible impact, maybe they decide to do my mastermind. Maybe after my mastermind, they keep decide to continue to work with me in my one-on-one program, right? That's my client map, right? Do you see how all, I have a lot going on, but none of my free things or my paid things compete with each other. And I just want to say, if you feel like in your business, it isn't aligned like that, get some outside help, get some outside strategy, because it definitely takes some mindful decision-making to do that. But when you have that done, I'm telling you, it is the biggest, biggest gift in your business because it just creates so much clarity for your clients instead of what a lot of people do is they have so many offers in their business that compete with each other that their audience doesn't buy because they're confused or paralyzed or they're like, I really want to work with Susie, but I'm not sure if I should do offer A, B, or C, right? They're all kind of similar and I really want to work with her, right? Your offers and your business should be set up so that people are not confused, right? And I get that that clarity takes, um, so much energy and so much, um, decision-making on your behalf as a business owner, but I want to encourage you to get support. I would love to help you with that, right? Take some time, take a CEO day and brainstorm. Um, but having products and having a client map that doesn't compete, but instead really aligns, um, with each other so that my offers are really self-selling is honestly one of the best things I did in my business when it comes to, you know, in general and my launches. And so I'm just so thankful for that. You Okay. I think we did it. I think we got through all five. I know this is one that you'll probably want to replay because it was a meaty one, but I never want to hold back from you guys. I really want to give you everything, all the insights that are coming to me along the way. Um, so I hope that that was, this was helpful. Let me know which of the five stood out most to you. And if you're wanting to work with me this year, I have great news. The next round of my six week visibility bootcamp visible impact is going to be opening soon. So make sure you get your booty on that wait list. If you are not consistently visible online right now, this is going to be a game changer for you with my proven visibility and content planning formula. And of course, the way that I teach is simple so that you can graduate the program, graduate the six weeks, feeling so confident that you have a visibility system you can rinse and repeat. And um, what I've seen for women in this program is being able to sign clients in the program, but also just having a crazy boost of confidence in how they see themselves as as an expert and how they show up online with authenticity, how they're able to teach, um, how they're able to sell all the important areas of visibility, um, and especially in a way that attracts the right audience members, speaks to the right ideal clients. So you can hop on the wait list for that at annfranzen.com slash um, visible impact. You can also read more about the six-week program um, and feel free to email me too with any questions. I'll drop my email on there too. If you have any questions about the program, you're welcome to email me personally. I'm happy to respond respond. Um, and more than anything, I just want to thank you so much for being here. I cannot believe we are 50 episodes into this podcast and I know I for sure could not do it without you. So thank you so much for being there. If this podcast is helpful for you, feel free to leave me a reading and review. I read every review and they mean so much to me. Um, and I just hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thanks for hanging out today. Please hit that subscribe button so you can make sure to stay updated anytime a new episode drops. And I would love for you to join me in my free Facebook community. It's called The Heart-Centered Entrepreneur. We discuss the podcast episodes. I regularly go live and do free trainings. And you may even meet your newest biz bestie. So you can join at 
heartcenteredcommunity.com. It's absolutely free and I cannot wait to see you in there.